Good morning. Oh, deep breath. <laughs> it feels like Monday, even though it's not. Do you ever feel that way? That sometimes you just go, hmm. <laughs> Take a deep breath before everything you do. <clears throat> and you'll be able to focus. Maybe. I'm still kind of clearing my throat. <laughs> All right, for those of you who don't know what this series is, we are reading from A Course of Love, which is a sacred text written by Mary Perron. She was talking to and sharing information and just writing verbatim um, sacred words and texts by Jesus. The reason why it's called A Course of Love is because Jesus explained to her that everything that's true is love, right? <clears throat> really changed my life, changed my thinking, it kind of, um, for me, it was an undoing of patterns, conditions, and structures that were very painful and just kind of deadening is the best way I could say it. It's very deflating um, to an intuitive, you know, who lives a heart-centered life. You know, sometimes I'm sure many of you can relate um, that as an intuitive being who lives mostly intuitively and then the world teaches absolutely opposite of that as a part of their entire system of living and structure of life this course helped me become a better human not so much to acclimate to that but to be in the world but still myself to be in the world and still um, but, but not clinging of their ways do you know what I mean um, it helped me not lose myself in that madness so because to me the world is complete madness like I look at some of the way that the world operates and I'm just like does not compute, not here nor here anymore. <laughs> but I can understand what's not understandable in a certain sense. You're not really getting it from here, but you're kind of getting it from here. In a wordless way, you can understand what's going on in the world without really shifting yourself to become like that, you know? <coughs> Excuse me. I assure you we're going to start any minute now. <laughs> Water and breath, very important. For those of you who don't know me, I am Pamela Erlen. I am a clear conduit channel and trance channel of Christ conscious beings. So um, what that means is I channel when my eyes open and sometimes I trance and it looks like I'm sleeping, but I'm just in a deep meditation where my personal consciousness isn't there and the same thing happens when I'm actually awake my personal conscious can observe that there is a Christ conscious being I make sure it's that for me coming through and talking to you I can observe it happening but I don't really know what I'm saying or what it's about I just let the being take over when it wants to that's how I work um, <clears throat> today my team always wants me to remember what I'm doing that we can tell you about it before I get started, but it takes a minute because I don't operate that way. <laughs> Intuitives trying to market themselves. It's like, what? Um, so today I'm, I think I'm doing a spiritual development Q&A on my Patreon spiritual community. That's where, um, and you can find that at patreon.com forward slash Pamela Erlen where we all sit together in more of a satsang style, a very sacred space where we're honoring each other and you get to ask me um, whatever spiritual development questions that you want. Um, as long as you don't ask me anything psychic like trying to predict the future or anything political or triggering in that particular way, like with politics, um, <clears throat> you can ask me pretty much anything. Yep, I don't touch politics in the way that I don't eat like a lot of like dead things you know politics to me is like dead fish that's been rotten for a long time it doesn't do anything but get stinky so don't ask me that but today at 1 p.m. that's what we're doing over uh, on my patreon channel further this week we're having a spiritual bonfire that's an even deeper satsang you know for a more exclusive group but anyone is welcome to join it's just a tier 5 event um, and then we're also doing what else we're we doing a sound healing later this week and next week we start on channelings for for this month just to give you uh, kind of a theme 
What we're going through is trying to deeply accept and get into a gratitude space is what we're doing. And the theme is the everyday sacred, how to be in a sacred space, no matter what you're thinking, feeling, and what's going on in your external circumstance. That's what we're teaching the channeling channel beings that are coming through this month. That's what it's all about. So again, um, <clears throat> that is on patreon.com forward slash Pamela Arilyn. That's my name. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, who are we channeling this month? Ram Das, love him. Channeled him a couple times already for you, but it's just he is a master at the everyday sacred. He really is, and he can take complicated things and break it down for you and make it simple to understand. Who else? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I completely forgot. This schedule's up on the thing. <laughs> I'm supposed to remember, but I don't. So it must not be important right now. We are on chapter three. I'm going to be reading verse by verse, and then we're going to be stopping after the verse and giving a space for Jesus to come through and just tell us what he thinks about the verse and kind of help us go deeper, maybe simplify some things, whatever needs to be done for you who are listening today. You can't really make this course better. It's incredible, but you can kind of talk to the being who wrote it and help simplify it. So again, this is the course, A Course of Love. I am on page 26, chapter 3, verse 3.1, starting right at the beginning. Make it easy for you. It says, love is. It teaches by being what it is. It does not do anything. It does not strive. It neither succeeds nor fails. It is neither alive nor dead. And thus it always was and always will be. It is not particular to you as human beings. It is in relationship to everything, all to all. He stops us here. He says, this means that if you are awakened to the love that you are, all of the worldly definitions that are causing you to seek understanding begin to fade and you no longer need them. You no longer feel so attached to them to these meanings to feel comfortable or you no longer feel the need to explain yourself, to elaborate who and what you are. And if someone were to ask you in the same way that the world often asks, they ask, what do you do? Quote for a living. Well, what are you about? They may as well be saying, who are you? But they're asking about an action. An action isn't what you are. Love is what you are. And love is who you are. That's indescribable to the current state of the world today and those who inhabit the madness that it exhibits. The world will attempt to define you by the things you do, the titles you hold, the roles you play. But those are hats that you wear on your head that you take off when you enter a building. Do you wear it to sleep at night? Is it on your head when you wake up? When you're meditating, are you saying, yes, I'm focusing on this hat right now upon my head. Thank you very much. When someone asks me, I'm going to say, yes, I'm this hat right here. You see, this is who I am. And he holds it out for you to take. <laughs> Sometimes he cracks me up. I'm sorry. Yes, the hat is who I am. He continues to jest. <laughs> See how silly that is? Who you are is incomprehensible to those who believe that you are the hat. Do you see the insanity of your world? Do you see why you suffer when you attempt to follow by its rules? Love is what it is. You do not need to define it. It is who you are. And it's not even comprehensible by those who aren't awakened to the truth of this. Okay, um, 3.2 says, Just as true knowledge cannot be learned, love cannot be learned, and you cannot be learned, all that you desire and cannot learn is already accomplished. It is accomplished in you. It is you. Imagine the ocean or the cheetah 
the sun or the moon or God himself attempting to learn what they are. They are the same as you. All exists within you. You are the universe itself. He stops us here and he says, you are the sound of creation. You are what is responsible as creation itself, not as creator. You are creation itself. Thereby, everything that you see can fall under the purview of your responsibility. He said, no, wait before you get upset. What I mean by responsibility is your ability to respond as a God being that you are. The world is only there for your response. What do you choose? If you don't like what you choose, choose again. And you will see the world around you shift, change, and bow to the creation. I think he just gave us a manifestation task. He said, not task, directive. <laughs> All right, um, 3.3 says, it is a shared universe with no divisions. You are no sections, no parts, no inside, no outside, no dreams, no illusions that can escape or hide, disappear or cease to be. There is no human condition that does not exist in all humans. It is completely impossible for one to have what another does not have. All is shared. This has always been true and is endlessly true. Truth is truth. There are no degrees of truth. He stops us here and says, when you believe that you are a mind, the mind will tell you that you are also a body. When you believe that you are mind and body, then you believe that you are a soul. And then you will say, my past lives dictate who and what I am. I am fragments, parts, fractals of God. And in the dream, you learn much mastery from this belief, and it is still untrue. All of the lives. Any time that you remember being born and then having died, that's not true either. Yet you gain so much mastery in the mind and body and soul from this duality dream that you all share, and this is its reason that you have created when you believe you are a mind, you believe you need to learn, grow, expand. And going back to my initial teaching for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, you are those sons and daughters. And I know nothing of the dream any further except when you remind me. God knows nothing of the dream except when you pray and ask for divine assistance, which is always there during the dream. If you wish to awaken further, you can also begin by releasing the judgments and attachments that you have so, that you are so clinging to that prevent your awakening. For you cannot have both. You can learn while believing that the attachments are true when you believe that you are a mind and a body. But you cannot fully awaken why you believe that you can and should have both in the same world. You cannot be awake and asleep at the same time unless you believe that you are a mind, body, and soul, and nothing beyond. Okay, let's go on to 3.4. It says, you are not form, nor is your real world. You seek the face of God in form as you seek for love in form. Both love and God are there, but they are not the form that your body's eyes see. Just as these words you see upon this page are symbols only of meaning far beyond what the symbols can suggest, so too is everything and everyone around you, those you see and those you only can imagine. To seek the face of God, even in the form of Christ, is to seek for what is forever without form. To truly see is to begin to see the formless. To begin to see the formless is to begin to understand what you are. Okay. We'll stop here today. Thank you so much for joining me every day in this, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Have a great day.